The Trial Chambers is Minecraft's newest structure and it is complex, made up of not just hallways, stairs, chambers and secrets, but instead dozens of variations of each. Today I'll be passing on the weird places these things tend to spawn, and boy are they weird, to instead do something even the wiki hasn't done right now, showing you every single room and every single secret contained within the Trial Chambers. This took some real doing, but please do subscribe if you like it, although I must start with the disclaimer that this video is correct as of November 2023. However, it is likely that rooms and spawners types will be added and some of the rooms shown here will be upgraded or removed by the final version of this update. Keep that in mind when you see some of the more useful secrets which you'll definitely want to use as well as some of the weirder secrets which make you question why Mojang would even put a room in the game that looks like this to begin with. Anyway, this is going to be the second of the three parts. We'll also talk about the key that ties it all in together. But first, before any of that, there are 11 different enemies you can find in the trial chamber. However, you'll only ever find up to four in a given one and one of those will always be the breeze. The other three are selected randomly from these three categories. There is melee, ranged, and small melee, and this means that there are hundreds of different combinations of trial chamber spawners alone, which means every experience is different and some are much harder than others. For example, the ranged category, you always get one of these, can either be bone blocks surrounding a trial spawner to represent skeletons, or it can be ice blocks to represent the stray, or even worse, you can have some mushrooms around there representing a skeleton which shoots poison arrows. Given the model of this is kind of janky, I assume this will eventually be its own mob, but still very scary in its current form. Meanwhile, in the melee camp, the zombie has been much easier for me than the slime, and the husk is significantly rarer than Eva. So when you see sandstone around your trial spawner, you know you've got something special. Then finally, there is the small melee category, which has the spider and cave spider you'll recognize from the cobwebs above the spawner, as well as the mixture of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone, which results in a baby zombie spawner. This is the absolute worst thing Mojang has ever done. And then there is just one more in the small melee camp which seems to be the Silverfish Spawner. This is officially on the list, but after loading up 30 or 40 Trial Chambers, I have yet to find a single one, so either it's not correctly implemented yet, or it's incredibly rare, take that as you will. And so, if you don't like the baby zombies or skeletons with poison arrows in your Trial Chambers, you'll have to find an entirely new one, because otherwise they will show up room after room after room. But speaking of those rooms, let's go through them all now. When looking at a Trial Chamber from afar, it can seem like an incredibly complex complex structure, but ultimately it is made up of rooms from just three categories, the chambers themselves, and then hallways and staircases to connect them all together, because otherwise you'd go from challenge to challenge to challenge. And so let's explain precisely what all of these staircases look like. The first type of staircase is something you'll recognize if you've ever been to a stronghold, because it looks a lot like the stronghold staircase, except made out of copper. When these are double height, they'll have a big hole in the middle for you to climb down like a fireman's pole. And when they are single height, they'll have just a single uh, block trapped in there, so you have to go all the way around to get down it. There is also the regular staircase made up of just three rows of copper, as you can see like so, and then there is the double long version of the normal staircase, giving you four different variants of just simple kind of corridor staircases, which you'll find in your world. However, these aren't the only types of staircase rooms. The fifth type of staircase is also just three blocks wide, but encompasses an entire room. It might even be mistaken as a trial chamber itself. However, you can tell that it's not because you'll never find a trial spawner in here and so as a result it is just a connected room between two places and you can do so by taking these ladders on the sides of the room or you can take the staircase right up and down. Then there is a free way staircase, a staircase that can connect three separate rooms. This looks like so and ultimately doesn't really work as a staircase because you just jump from what you go up from one staircase down to another. Each of the rooms are on the same level but there is a staircase taking these all down into one secret underwater room. This under underwater room is actually four separate beds for you and three friends to sleep. If there's more than three of you, then, you know, one of you is going to have to leave the server or something, but still a very fun thing that will also give you a piece of loot which will help you survive in the game. In this case, 10 jacket potatoes and 26 bamboo planks is a pretty good deal. You won't find anything else in the water outside of this besides sometimes glow squids, weirdly enough, uh, but yeah, this water is mostly here so that you can appreciate the beauty of the beds hidden within, and I think this is a fun miniature secret you can find in a staircase already. 
Although getting out of this water is a, uh, it, it, it'll take some doing I reckon. The seventh version of the stairs looks a lot like a hybrid of the last two. It's got this big free wide staircase in the middle, but it kind of works in reverse. You have to go down it to go up the ladders to actually get out of the room. Very interesting, but also this has some water in it. It's not deep enough to find any glow squids or beds. However, you might get lucky and find a chest in here, which is pretty darn great as a nice bonus as a stairway between rooms. The second type of structure you'll find in the trial chambers is the hallway. And this is your perfect box standard hallway, the basic one. Uh, there is nothing notable about this room besides it has copper and uh, uh, oxidized copper and the occasional bulb along it. This is a hallway that just connects things without having any vertical incline. However, if we go down this staircase, at the end of it, we'll find a much more interesting hallway that leads us out to some copper grates. And when they're oxidized, they'll have a chest right in front of them. These copper grates will always have some deep slate behind them, which I think is a nice detail. This will be true even if the block behind it isn't meant to be deep slate. In the case of this, it's a super flat world we're testing on, and so there should be dirt back there, but you'll see cobble deep slate spawn regardless, a fun touch in my opinion, as well as some bulbs if you really want to use those. However, the chest can contain some resources that will help you on your fight. These resources are due to change, but something I found interesting is that the chest doesn't spawn there if the grates are not oxidized, and so I have to say, this, uh, you know, this hallway right here, the second variant is not very great in my opinion. There is also a fourth variant of the corridor, which can go around corners like so, and this will lead to dead ends, but this one is likely to be patched out, as Mojang have said, uh, that these ending in dead ends is a bug. Assuming the previous corridor wasn't a mistake, there's also a fifth variant, which is much longer, and halfway down it will have a chest, which is very nice, ooh, some poison arrows, and a sixth variant, which connects three different rooms together, one, two, and then three over here. However, this also has a staircase within it, except the staircase only leads you to a small reward in the form of another barrel and four beds, but these four beds are always colored, so clearly this is the better type of bedroom, and uh, also you get a gold pickaxe in here sometimes. Wow, that's very handy, isn't it? So if you want a safe place to kind of securely wait between rooms, this is a great way to do that, although breezes will still go over there, so keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Finally, we've got the whole reason that you come to this structure, and it is the trials themselves. These are recognizable because most of them have trial spawners, and therefore will be spawning mobs repeatedly at you, and uh, almost all of them are dead-end rooms. There are exceptions to both of those rules, and the biggest one is this, which I have to point out, I felt uncomfortable saying wasn't a corridor, however, because it has trial spawners, and specifically is a room you can beat, uh, even though it connects multiple rooms together, it kind of is a hybrid between the two, uh, and it was referred to at Minecraft Live as a corridor, but you never find these without mobs in them, and you'll often find all sorts of loot down them, and even though they're a connective structure you find in most of the trial chambers, it is still, in my opinion, definitely a trial. The second trial that you're likely to find in every single structure is actually not one of these, because this is very nice, but the one that I showed you earlier with the vents. The secret bed that you find down here, and the vents that you find through it, um, are just two of the things that you'll find in the structure. You'll also find a tree here, and then two separate chests sitting in front of- uh, how did you spawn that? I, you know what? This, this, this is why you've got to scrape the iron, uh, scrape the rust off as you go through, otherwise you're gonna die to a skeleton, and no one wants that. Anyway, so, the key thing that you'll find in this room are two separate chests and then a third chest which you'll find just up over there and then if you really want to there's a fourth chest as I showed you before alongside a colored bed that's right no white peasant beds for us we're sleeping good tonight boys anyway the important thing to say is this is the only trial chamber which will generate in every single structure there is something very interesting about that and how it relates to the key in my opinion and it's also one of the very few trial chambers which has basically no downsides it is pure positive giving you every single good thing that you could want from the trial chamber, from a tree to four sets of chests, to a pure, you know, safe place to actually kind of unwind and uh, indeed keep yourself safe from every single mob in the game, uh, mostly breezes included, not entirely all the time. And uh, yeah, this is almost always found, <laughs> what just died up there? This is almost always found in connection to a hallway uh, trial chamber, which is the second variant, which might give you the false impression that these are easy structures to deal with, but boy, could this not be further from the truth. There are so many other rooms filled with so many mobs because instead of just finding the occasional trial spawner, you'll find multiple types all spawning together. Here is a trial chamber room with slimes, skeletons with poison arrows, as well as the fun breeze which will set off traps. Uh, by the way, any room with a breeze in seems to have dispensers on the sides, which is just a fun little detail. Uh, but this particular trial chamber is recognizable because in the center, you'll always find a dispenser with a water bucket. This can be useful if you want to take the water bucket yourself, but also the thing that you'll notice about this room is there's two of these weird sides. If you're brave enough, one of these two sides can be entered, and there is some bonus loot 
on top of all you get for taking down the free trail spawners in here. It also kind of represents a fun way to stay safe from everything. But there is a full chest of loot that you can find in here. Less challenging but more annoying is the small melee room. These are recognizable because they'll have a lot of small melee spawners. In my case, we've got slimes here, which doesn't seem to be a very big deal to me. However, keep in mind that these rooms will have a lot of copper grates. And so baby zombies and spiders and cave spiders too will crawl underneath those vents in a way that you personally cannot. And uh, yeah, this uh, variant of the room right here is kind of a maze, honestly. There's lots of spawners all over the place that you've got to work your way through. And if you can do that, you'll find yourself a chest, which is well hidden over here. Again, this room really is like a bit of a spaghetti maze, even though it is quite simple and does have a couple of chests for you. To get around it really requires a lot of going around in weird ways, or you can just make a simple block right here, and you can save all of that work by going right along the top and just taking down one spawner or blocking it up or whatever you want to do. This is a really fun version of a trial chamber in my opinion. There's also a variant of this exact same room where things are slightly easier to come by. Here is the chest, right immediately got able to spawn, and also you can jump across here to get to the same uh, zombie or melee spawner and uh, pass the small melee spawner, which again is your worst nightmare, into the second chest. Actually, is the third chest here as well, or is that... Oh no, the third chest is replaced by one of these. I think I think I'm dead now. Oh no, I saved, okay, I saved this. Uh, this is the fourth variant of the trial chambers, very fun as it may be. The fifth chamber you'll find in this structure is also incredibly common in my experience, and it's filled with ranged mobs and a lot of height. I like to call this the very vertical room, because despite having literal staircases, this is the room which covers the most height and honestly has the most challenge, because even with skeletons, you're talking about 12 to 15 skeletons at a single time, you really have to hope that they fight each other so you don't die. Um, but there, this is a very, very challenging room that is very rewarding in exchange. I mean, look, look at this. I, I don't really need to worry about anything else now. All my problems have gone away because I have an enchanted golden apple. But yeah, you will find a lot of enemies here. I think this is my seventh spawner over here. Uh, if you don't mind the risk of that and you want the reward, it's totally worth it. But if you don't want to be in a pandemonium and you really think that even an enchanted golden apple should be enough to save you, then this is a place I would not recommend. Something I would recommend, if only because it's incredibly cool, is this hanging uh, platform room. As you can see, there's these platforms hanging from the ceiling, and there's also a couple of spawners on the far wall. I like this a lot because the, they have these random copper crates, which you can use as a way to cleverly defend from the skeletons. There's a skeleton over there, but I just have to make sure he stays away. And the same is true for the breeze. All you've got to do is stop the line of sight being clear, and then the breeze won't be able to do anything, and you can finish him off instead in person. And I think that makes for some really fun design that makes you realize that just because you can see something, it doesn't mean that something can see you. Oh, and for what it's worth, this room seems to have an ungodly number of variants that I'm genuinely not sure I've counted correctly, uh, but this exact same room does sometimes have extra chests, extra spawners, and extra places to hide if you want that. Although, personally, if you like hanging platforms, I think you'll like this room a lot more. It's one which has these hanging platforms very far above uh, the spawners which are below, and as you can see, this represents a fun little game where you can just run in, grab your- oh my god, so many diamonds if you want to, or you can treat this as a much more serious encounter and you can jump right down there taking some real damage in the process but then being able to have a similar room to the previous vibe just with this sitting on top of it. And if you like that you might like this next variant more which has more platforms on it although they seem to not always necessarily lead anywhere valuable and also underneath it you'll find a bunch of powdered snow which is fine for the strays you find down there but for you might result in your first suffocation in a very serious situation. I personally do quite like this variant but it's something to watch out for. Since if you do want to avoid the huge full damages, something fun that you can do is you can break this grate you'll find at the entrance and you can climb right down there and only take one heart of full damage, which is a big difference. And then you can come in from this little secret staircase over here, which you might just prefer. Personally, I think it's a lot of fun that they have these grates to represent secret holes. You won't find that grate on this variant, but you'll be very pleased that there is a second chest, although a second spawner, uh, if you so please. Since after looking more carefully, it looks like every variant of this thing either has a spawner with a chest or a spawner with a grate, which feels like a big trade-off in my opinion. I'd much rather have a chest than a grate now that I'm given the opportunity. Uh, but yeah, this actually, this room actually has uh, two of those same grates. So there's one on this side, and then there's a second staircase over here. Presumably these are built to have more connections to other rooms, but it just feels kind of weird in the current form. Speaking of grates, you'll also find them on this small hallway variant. They seem like they just go from one place to another to hint that you should be over there, but what they're actually 
actually much better at hinting is that you'll find chests in these sections where there are grapes. Oh no, it shouldn't have fallen down. Oh no, there's mobs down there. Anyway, this is the short hallway variant and it's very, very bizarre for lots of different reasons in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that this is uh, only being shown because I'm using it to link over to this weird variant of a room. It's kind of on a diagonal slope and so we can call it the slope room, but it will sometimes form breezes. As a result, you've got to watch out for all of the fire charges and water buckets and everything else on the wall. There is also a third variant of this room, which is much smaller and therefore much more uh, filled with mobs and death and only one chest, sadly. But do keep in mind that despite the lack of different variants of this room, besides maybe some copper aging, uh, you can enter it from different ways at different times with different chests. And so something very important to note is you won't always enter it from the same place with the same door. And uh, yeah, I'm getting away right now. And this is true for every one of the rooms that I've showed up today. Uh, no matter how you think you're meant to get in there, there'll always be a different room which gets you in in a different way. And so, oh yeah, this is terrifying. But that regardless, right now, outside of subtle variations on the existing designs, you've now seen each of the major types. Like this one, for example, has a small kind of staircase you can stand up on. Does that make it its whole own room? I would argue in some ways no, but maybe you would argue in some ways yes. What about our small mobs room from before with the chest and then you got the staircase for a second chest? Is this room different if it has a grand staircase instead of a hallway here? I mean, it doesn't functionally change very much, but it is technically a different version of the room. So there are lots of these minor variations, but I believe that I've shown them all off now. I'm hoping. At this point, I was happy to wrap up and say I've shown you every single major type of trial chamber, but then I realized, no, I want to see every single sub variant of this, if only for my own curiosity, and to say we found every single room. And so I spent a lot of time loading up trial chambers and finding more structures. And so here are the fun variants I found. This is the confrontation style room, but it has a big box in the center, deliberately put there so that the breeze can be extra annoying in the form of fire charges, and sometimes potions and arrows. This is a version of the hanging platform room, except one corner of the room is inexplicably missing. It's not because it collided with another part of the structure. It is genuinely just not meant to be there in a way that I'm not entirely sure was entirely planned out. But yeah, there is a corner missing on this variant. This is a version of the hanging room, which has powdered snow, but only has one chest, as opposed to another variant, which has two chests, entirely possible to get. And this is the same powdered snow room, except it has the corner missing again. I think that means you can get variants on variants, clearly powdered plus corner missing. And this is another version of that confrontation room that has the same hanging platforms, but this one has not just a spawner on one of these weird dispenser blocks, but a second one which has a chest on top. And although you can't get there without placing some blocks, just like so, you know, I have to, Java placing, definitely inferior to bedrock placing when it comes to uh, placing in front of you. Uh, you can see that this room is kind of interesting in that way uh, because it gives you a whole second chest, but in exchange, you have to fight three spawners and also one of them's a breeze. So uh, that is, I believe, every major variant that exists. And my God, there are so many, right? And so now it's time to focus on these secret rooms of which there are just two that I found across my 100 or so trial chambers I've loaded up. One of these is found just behind the tree room. If you break down this, there is a deliberate kind of connection onto what seems to be nothing. This is a room uh, that if you put the blocks back into, if you really want to, uh, leaves you in a one by three by three space. Is this intentional or is this a mistake? Your first answer might be that it's a clear mistake and it's one of those weird secret rooms that wasn't clearly intended. The other is definitely not this weird hybrid of an ancient city with a trial chamber because, oh god, it is terrifying and definitely a mistake. I think when it comes to weird ways that Minecraft's generation is broken, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt that these sorts of things will be patched over. This is why it is a snapshot, right? However, I'm much less sure about the rooms which exist above any of the hanging platforms because if you look over here, you'll find a big one wide room which exists up there. And given that they acknowledge that crawling is a thing, uh, this might be turned into something else as a fun secret for people digging between rooms. Or maybe it's a pure generation fault that happens because of the vertical nature of these things. It's hard to be perfectly sure, but there's one thing that I am about 90% sure of, and it is how the key relates to all of this. 
So after looking through each of the 25 plus rooms in this place, you might start to conclude that they're all kind of similar. They're all made from copper and tough and they've all got the same rough challenge. What is the real point in being here after you've worked it out and you've taken the loot, etc.? Well, the answer is that one of the rare forms of loot that you can find either from killing trowel spawners or sometimes rarely in chests uh, is this the trowel key. You might end up with anywhere from two to five trowel keys after taking one down in survival, but what are these actually for is the biggest mission the community has been working on, but I think one of these secret rooms actually ties perfectly into it. Seriously, after looking at the room that's behind here, you might say, oh, Mojang made a clear mistake, but after you take a second and look at the outside, I think it becomes very clear that this room is actually very deliberately set up to be almost like a vault door. I mean, look at it. It's got copper around the outside. This is clearly a way in and out, but despite going through over 100 trial chambers, there is no trial chamber that actually lets you in and out that way, and indeed, you always have this one by three by three room on the other side. And so what do I think is actually going to go here? This is, in my opinion, a clear placeholder for something that will require a trial key. I don't know if this is going to be something that you could just break your way into. I imagine there's a room there, but you can just break around like this. Uh, but I do imagine that something about this trial key will unlock something brand new unheard of on the other side. Will it be something almost portal like? Because if you don't go portal like, you have to stop people breaking through the room. Uh, will this just be some boss fight that spawns if you do it this way, but won't if you break it otherwise. Uh, will there be some amazing loot that you can only access by finding this room, going through the vault door, and then opening the chest with the keys? I don't know the answers to any of these questions, and that's what drives me mad about this, but also what makes this such a genius structure. It is very, very fun base gameplay. I think it's amazing for the early game, but it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing for the mid game too. This is a place you will have a lot of fun exploring and doing stuff, in my opinion. However, but on top of just being an amazingly fun challenge for the early parts of the game, I also think this is an incredibly interesting opportunity for Mojang to give us something uh, that makes you want to come time and time again to more and more trial spawners. Why should you want to collect these keys? That's something we still don't know, but my theory that I'm now 80% locked in on is that there is a vault door you have to unlock. There is nothing like it anywhere else in the trial chambers, and nothing else makes you really feel like it is the perfect place for a key to go. Will that? Th I think there is going to be a brand new block that you're going to unlock, and I think on the other side of this, we're going to see another room, and that's why I had the disclaimer at the beginning. I also think it's important to note that, like, really, uh, where do you draw the line of, like, variance versus just subtle differences is quite tricky, but I hope you enjoyed this video regardless. I hope you found it interesting, because, as always, I've been IBX Toycat. You can subscribe if you'd like to see the latest deep dives into everything Minecraft, particularly when it comes to updates, and for now, I hope you'll enjoy the video, because I'll see you next time. This one took so much longer than I thought. It's been over two days now, um, but it's been so fun to dive into this structure, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So I'll see you next time. Bye!